channel as well, Bake Sews. Welcome back if you're a subscriber and welcome if you're new. Today's vlog is in place of a Friday Sews. I'm doing it as a Sunday sewing catch up. I'm sorry that I wasn't with you on Friday. I have had one of those weeks. So I hope you're all well, I hope you're all happy and I hope you've all had plenty of time to sew. It's been a bit of a week for me. So I've had an entire week off work and I expected that to mean lots of sewing time. But we, in true style, had a few things that I had to get done. It, it's the week that I do all the uniform shopping with the kids and make sure that their hairs are cut and we have all of those appointments that we need to do. Like today, I've got a, an optician's appointment to go and get my eyes retested because I'm struggling to wear my glasses at the moment. I can't see through my reading glasses. I've had some sewing disasters as a result of that this week. And I just haven't had as much sewing time as I expected. Now, if you follow me over on Instagram, you will also know that my partner has now started my sewing shed. I say my sewing shed. It's, it's an entire shed that's attached to my house that will have a storage area, will have our utility area in as it current or currently it previously did have. And then there will be a section in there for me to be sewing in as well. So he took that down this week and obviously we've had all of that work going on. We had terrible weather yesterday, so we didn't really get much further along and he was getting quite frustrated because he'd taken an extra day off with the bank holiday weekend just to try and get the main construction up and back down again. So yeah, He's outside, he's getting on with that. If you can hear some banging in the background, that's what that is, so I apologise. So I thought I'd pop on and have a quick catch up with you and just let you know what I've been doing. Um, for the eagle-eyed of you, I have had my hair done. I've had it cut slightly shorter, so I had probably about that much taken off of my length. And my hair just feels a lot healthier for it. And I asked him for a slightly shaggier look this time. Um, so I've got lots of different layers in it, just so I can curl it up, mess it up. And he's also tweaked the way I have my fringe. Normally I have like a thick, full fringe, but I wanted a fringe that kind of shaped my face. So when I wear my hair up, it looks really nice. But I do love my hair. I'm very happy with it. Um, and I hope you guys like it too. So let's tell you what I'm wearing today. I have on a Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt. I don't know if I've actually shared this before on here. I made it just before I went to Benidorm. It's made in this gorgeous viscose jersey fabric that I got from First for Fabrics. Um, and I've got this on with a pair of my Saguaro Friday Pattern Company Saguaro trousers. These are just in a blue viscose linen that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. They're very comfortable. And I will explain what's around my neck in a second as well. I also have on a pair of Jazz and Wow earrings, another new release to my shop, so sorry for the little plug here, but this is my Miami Sunset range, so you can either buy the charm like this, um, or you can buy the hoops. There's also a stud version of this earring. There is also some buttons in the exact same pinks and oranges of colourings, and there will be some necklaces added to the shop as well. I just haven't had a chance to finish them off so I've got a decent stock base but yes yeah, so there's quite a light nice little mini selection there of those I will link my shop down below over on Etsy so if it is something you're interested in you can go and check it out let's talk about London I visited um London for my birthday last Saturday with the lovely Adele who is Sofa Serenity here on YouTube and over on Instagram now Adele and I are very close friends most of you that have been watching me for a little while will know that and you will know that we try and get together a couple of times a month where possible now we do both attend the same sewing social she joins mine and we also both go to the staffordshire social but occasionally if we can sandwich extra time in elsewhere we will do and i wanted to do something for my birthday and asked her if she fancied joining me and in the end we decided we were going to go to london and explore now i had this thing about wanting to visit rainbow fabrics although i knew it was a relatively small shop i really wanted to go in person and see the shop because i was expecting it to be like an aladdin's cave there to be lots of remnants and it to be a bit of a place to have a good rummage so it wouldn't just have the things that we see online now i'll be honest with you i was a little bit disappointed when i got there because it was definitely a little shop and there wasn't much in the way of fabric in the shop the online shop is so much better so um it wasn't a wasted trip adele managed to purchase something from there but I did come away feeling a little bit deflated. However, we had a plan that we wanted to visit lots of different things. Um, and from there, we sort of mooched over to Camden Market. Now, Camden Market in London is quite a 
well-known place it's got lots of little quirky shops in it handmade vintage jewelry all sorts of various different bits and bobs to suit so many different people but it's a very touristy spot and it was very busy so we did go we had a quick look around we didn't stop there for long because it was very busy but we went and we did that which was really nice um we both bought um a, an item of jewelry i think i bought a pair of earrings some really big silver floral earrings um and i think adele bought a necklace and then from there, we sort of decided, right, let's get back on the fabric shopping train. And um, we sort of made our way over to Dalston with a view to go to Dalston Mill Fabrics. Now, Dalston Mill Fabrics, I have seen online, the quality of their fabrics can be a bit mixed, mixed bag. So they've got, they're quite inexpensive. They're not a particularly expensive shop to shop in. Um, and online, you don't always know what you're getting. But I've never been unhappy with anything I've received when I have ordered from them. So we went over to the actual shop. We found a couple of market shops en route, which was really nice. And I finally made a purchase in one of those. And then we went down to Dalston Mill. Now from the outside, it looked really small and I thought, oh, it's gonna be another Ravo Fabrics. It's gonna be tiny. And then you walk in and it's like, wow, there's fabric everywhere, floor to ceiling. It is everywhere now if you are somebody that gets really overwhelmed by fabrics and you like a certain order and a certain neatness and not too much this isn't the place for you but if you are somebody that loves a good rummage loves looking floor to ceiling loves getting somebody to get up and get down to get your fabric out then this is a hundred percent the place for you um i did get a bit of video so i will pop it in um just a little mooch as i walked into the shop and then i got very into the actual shopping um i did buy quite a lot from there and i will share all of the fabrics that i've bought this past week in a fabric haul vlog for you and so we enjoyed that so much that we decided we were going to walk over to New Craft, New Craft House, which was a really nice sort of 40 minute walk from where we were through a lovely park and some of the suburban London areas. It was just really, really nice. We had a lovely, it was a really hot day. It was, and we got a drink on route. It was just lovely. Um, and we visited New Craft House. Now I've never been to New Craft House. I've never really shopped from New Craft House. It's not really my cup of tea in the way of fabrics um they have some extremely stunning designer dead stock um but a lot of it's fairly plain or um the luxurious aren't really becky bold and bright the, the becky kind of style fabrics that i love so we did have a look in there adele bought a couple of bits i'm really pleased with when i'm so glad i got to experience it um, but that was New Craft House. And then from there, we decided, right, OK, let's now head to um, Islington to do a bit of charity shop shopping and then have some dinner. So it was a lovely day. It went too fast. Adele did get me a couple of presents, hence the thing hanging around my neck. This is... <laughs> she bought me a lovely pamper kit um, that was full of Epsom salts for the bath and things like that. I, I bath pretty much every night and if I'm having really bad pain problems, I'll bath a couple of times a day. And I've actually used the majority of them already, but they were it was just such a fabulous and really thoughtful gift. This one here is a unpicker. So this is one that you can attach to your neck. You've got like a little magnet here. So you basically don't lose your own picker. It's a hemline one, if I remember rightly. It's absolutely stunning. It's had lots of use this week. Um, and the reason she bought me this is because I am always losing my own picker. I always turn up to a social without my own picker. And even when I do get a new one picker, I lose it straight away. I don't know what it is about an one picker, but I struggle to keep hold of it. So at least with this being on a chain, I literally hang this above my sewing station um, on one of my pegboard uh, clips. And yeah, it's perfect for me. So that is that. And I've hung it around my neck so I don't lose it and I don't put it down. So when I go back into my um, kitchen, I just hang it back up and it's not lost. The other thing that Adele bought me which is just stunning, was a piece of fabric. And um, she couldn't have picked a more stunning piece of fabric, really. So this, I've seen this before in, I think it's Stitch Fabrics where I've seen it before. Um, I know it's been on several different shops, but it's just, look at this. There's about two meters of this. It's gonna be a top of some sorts because it's just beautiful. It's a very Becky colored fabric. And I quite like it because you've got all these bright colors. You've got this gorgeous animal print on it but 
they're all little pops. Now I am thinking if I've got enough, I have printed the Fabric Godmother Fleur finally. Um, and I'm thinking this would make an absolutely stunning version of it because it's got that bit of drape to it. It's like a voile. I want to say it's a voile or it's a raw silk, but it's absolutely stunning. And um, I think it would make a really nice fabric godmother fleur. And because the fabric's not too structured, those nice billowy sleeves, I think I'll like the way they fit me. And it'll be something hopefully I get a bit of wear out of. But yeah, it's absolutely stunning. And if it fails and I don't like it, Adele will like it so I can pass it over to her. So that's kind of like my thinking with using this particular fabric. But I think this is absolutely stunning and I'm so in love with it. And it's been sitting on my side for quite a while whilst I try and work out what I want to make with it. So that was what I got from Adele. I just want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to those that bought me a coffee on my Kofi account last weekend for my birthday. I know I haven't got back to everybody yet and I will go back to you, but I just want to say a massive thank you. I had a couple of very generous coffees bought for me and they got used on Saturday when I was out and about um, shopping every time we stopped and had a drink I used that money to be able to get myself either a mango and passion fruit smoothie or a latte just so you know what I was purchasing with it um, but yeah it was really thoughtful and really unexpected and I just think you're absolutely wonderful to those that did donate I'm not going to name everybody because there was a few people there and you all know who you are so thank you very much the other thing I wanted to show you that's come into the house this week, now obviously I am doing a separate fabric haul, but the lovely Claire, who is over on Instagram, I'll pop her Instagram handle down below because I can't remember it off the top of my head, dropped me a message about this gorgeous So Haley Jane cotton poplin fabric that came through. She um, had noted I was talking about it in one of my vlogs a little while back to say that I don't always gel with the So Haley Jane fabrics and then every now and then she goes and sticks an absolute corker out like this one that I am absolutely in love with. Um, and she said it wasn't really her thing and she'd like to send it to me. And she did, and it came just in time for my birthday. And it's just such a wonderful, thoughtful gift. So thank you very much. I have yet to decide what I want to do with this. With Poplin, I struggle sometimes. And I really want to make a blazer with this because it just is gorgeous. But then I think because it's dark and it's quite thick, a blazer might not work in the weather that the prints aimed towards so i'm still thinking on what i want to make with it but i will find something um it's given me i've got a couple of poplins in my stash at the moment and i'm really trying to work out what i can use them for and so before i go in and talk about my sewing makes i'm going to talk about my disasters so i didn't get as much time to sew over the week as i hoped um, and I'm part way through a couple of projects. I'm actually going to get some sewing time today when I get back from the opticians. And I want to try and get myself into some meaty bits today. But I started sewing up with this fabric. Let's talk about this disaster first. I haven't got round to unpicking this yet, which is why it's still a disaster. This is supposed to be the Kaya top, which is a seamwork pattern. Basically, it's a pair of shorts and a sort of bralette top. And it's I've been using this fabric here. Now, nobody's going to see me in it outside of the home. This purely was for me to wear at home um, to do some exercise. Now, what I've managed to do, and I'm just going to show you if I took this through, because this is actually the neckline. Um, I have sewn the arms together during the burrito method and my neckline which is this line round here so where this nice little pit's poking through this is actually my neckline um and i've sewn the wrong things together so basically my other half's got the saw out sorry basically i need to go in and unpick all of this get the burrito method the right way round to get this finished and sewn up this was with a fabric that i think i got from dalston mill fabrics actually but it's been in guthrie garni it's been in um where else have i seen this i've seen this in quite a few different places it's just like a viscose jersey that's green and pink and obviously leopard print now i am in the process of making a pair of shorts that match this up as part of the seamwork kaya um set 
but yeah whether this top can be saved i don't know but i also have because this has got these gorgeous pops of orange in it i also have in my project bags a ellie and mac curved hem vest which is or curved hem tank i think it's called on their website it's a free pattern that they have and it's like a sporty type top now on my make nine there is an active wear kind of um, element to it and I've never made any kind of active wear and this was just even though it was with a viscose jersey it was kind of like my step in towards active wear because I want to get back into walking I feel like I'm controlling some of my symptoms a little bit better I will be able to do that so um, yeah I was just trying to sort of give myself a bit of motivation by making myself something that went completely wrong. But even if I can't save that, the vest top and the shorts will go really well together. So that was my first sewing disaster. My next sewing disaster was a simple and stupid one. This is the fabric. It's a double gauze that has a small check on one side, large check on the other side. I adore this fabric. I had been after it for such a long time. And when I went to Guthrie they had a 1.2 remita remnant of it and I thought that's great I can get a t-shirt out of it either like a Remy Raglan or in this case a grain line studio T. now you can see I have put it all together it's all gone smoothly looks fantastic fits great started doing the binding on it and um, you need to tuck and tuck under and right here where I've done this I've obviously trimmed the binding down when I've trimmed the underneath piece and then where I've gone to unpick it I have sliced through a hole in the actual main fabric and I'm like I don't know if I can save it so it's not unsavable at the moment it was just one that I was very frustrated with and I've put it to one side but I do adore this fabric I want to try and save it um, and finish making this up but we'll just see so that was another sewing silly mistake um, that I put to one side from another makes perspective if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen this this is the SD top by Tilly and the Buttons made out of this beautiful um, fabric that I got in the Beyond the Pink Door box it's such a summery gorgeous fabric and it's got the the colours in it it couldn't have been a better colorway that came to me because it's just stunning the reds the oranges the greens they're all in my color palette and i absolutely loved it now this was done out of a remnant piece of fabric that i had left from the skirt which i'm going to show you in a minute i've got a cozy club handmade um label in it that says this is pretty nice in it and then um on the back you've got lovingly handmade i think i've reversed it round on the skirt and i managed to get this out of the scraps so i could use up every piece and actually what i've done with all my other scraps is i've cut them all up into tiny little pieces and i've attempted to make some buttons with them a bit like my McElroy me buttons because it's such a lightweight fabric it's worked really well this is the Maeve skirt. The Maeve skirt is a simple skirt pattern from True Bias. Now, the Maeve skirt is normally a tiered skirt, or most people would have seen it as a tiered skirt. But what a lot of people don't realise with the Maeve skirt is there are so many different options in having the tiers, or in this case, not having the tiers at all. I didn't want to break up this beautiful print. It's so vibrant. I just thought it would be really nice just to keep it all as one piece. Um, so subsequently I ended up because the fabric was quite fine as well I didn't put the pockets in um, I just thought they'd end up flapping around they'd drive me around the bend um, and I didn't want to mess around with um, the not the button holes the button holes would have been fine with interfacing but the ties to go through so all I've done is an extra layer I've just literally done all my top stitching sort of like a foot pedal between but again I love it because it keeps that nice wide waistband really stable the other thing I quite like about the Maeve skirt is it does curve so at the top this bit here on the pattern piece it curves inwards and I find with a lot of skirt patterns I feel very wide in them I'm slightly pear-shaped so feeling wide isn't unusual um, on your bottom half so I tend to avoid skirts and fitted skirts for me I find really frustrating because 
I have a momentum and I just find that that shows as well. But I really love the way that this looks. I think it's beautiful. I have got my label in it as well. As you can see, I've put it the other way around in this one, but I've used the same label because I wanted to have it as kind of like a co-ord set. So I've got the Lovingly Handmade and then this is nice on the back. Um, these go really well together. I wore them together for my birthday, but they will also go absolutely lovely separately as well. So that was the main thing that I really got made up that was a success this week. Now, the other thing I sewed up was a pair of Esty trousers. These are in this gorgeous red linen fabric. Um, it's a viscose linen. I think I got this from Dalston Mill as well. This wasn't in the fabric haul that I bought. I think this was like an online purchase earlier on in the year. Um, I've been dying to use it. And I love how wide the SD set is. And um, I think we've still got a nice bit of weather ahead of us. And I just thought these would be perfect. I have put the patch pockets on the back. I have included a label, which I've put this one in. This one is from Becky Sewing Studio on Etsy. If I can find them, I'll link them down below. And I am in the process of also making up the top for this. But I've made a bit of a, a deviation from the pattern because... When I made the SD top up for this one, the only interfacing I had was really quite heavy and it does slightly hang loose. Nothing that you notice, it's something that I notice. So I decided, because I didn't have any other interfacing at the time when I was making the other one, that I would go and do like a lining instead. So the lining comes so you end up with like a shelf. Um, so I'm in the process of doing that. Um, I think I got as far as the fact that I needed my ironing board for something so I stopped making it the other night because I was doing it quite late at night. Now with the ST trousers because it's quite a thin elastic I always do a stitch in the ditch down all of the main seam points just to hold that elastic upright to stop it from um, flopping or twisting inside um, and that seems to work pretty well and these are just lovely they're quite heavy so I should get a bit of wear out of these through the autumn and then going into spring so I'll get spring summer and autumn as a seasonal thing for wearing these as well so yeah I'm really really happy with them so that is the Esty trousers by Talina Buttons I'm not going to show you them on because I want to show you them as a set so I will show you that in a later video so that's the Esty trousers um, that I've made. Hopefully I'll have the top to share with you next week. Now that's it from a sewing perspective. Considering I've had a week off, I did expect to get a lot more done, but I've been doing a lot of stuff with Jazz and Wow, preparing for the advent calendars. Now the advent calendars will be released next Saturday, which is the last day of August. I will be releasing the winners on Friday of the competition that I've been running over on Instagram on my Jazz and Wow page. If you don't follow that, go over and give it a follow. I will link it down below. And it is an opportunity to win either a button calendar or a Jazz and Wow earrings and buttons and other handmade goods calendar. Um, so there's quite a few entries into that competition already, but I will be drawing the winner of that on Friday and letting you know and then putting the pre-order up for the calendars um, on the Saturday. And I've been doing a lot of making this week around that as well. I've also been doing a lot of sorting this week. So I spent some time earlier on in the week sorting through all my patterns because I've got this sewing shed going up. I don't know if you can hear all the drilling and the sawing going on in the background. I'm really sorry if you can. Um, but I decided I had down in that corner over there, I've chucked loads and loads of patterns down there from where I've used them. I've either chucked them into a project bag, but they were all over the place um, and they were piling up and I couldn't find some of my patterns. It was all very disorganized. And I find that I do this every time I have some time off. I'll have a good sort out, good rummage. In the process of sorting out, some of the patterns have got damp that I store outside. So I've got mold in all the packets. I had to clear them out. It ended up becoming quite a big job. So I've now sorted through all of them. They're now ready and waiting to go when my sewing room's completed. Now I'm under no illusion that my sewing room is gonna be completed by the end of this weekend. Um, I'm hoping the main shell will be up by the end of this weekend, but then Scott will be sort of sandwiching the piecing the rest of it together 
in um, his sort of time at home when he's not at work or at the pub. So um, yeah, I, I'm kind of working on the timeline end of September. So I think that's and all it, I've got to share with you. Now I will have a fabric haul vlog come out in the middle of this week. I'm gonna go and film that a bit later today. So you'll have that there soon and I can show you all of the fabrics that I've bought from my London trip and my trip to Neil's Fabrics on Tuesday. Um, and just to let you know, I have put myself on a mini fabric ban. Now, this is a completely achievable one. It's basically from this payday to next because I go to Scot Scot Scottish Frocktails at the end of next month and I'll be going to So Confident whilst we're there. So I haven't done like a September ban. I've done a August payday ban. So it'll be August payday through to September payday, which happens to fall in between all of all those that. events. Right. That's it from me this week. I've got plenty to get on with. I'm not going to give you any plans because I'm in one of those frames of minds at the moment. I don't know what the weather's doing. I don't know whether we're going to keep sunny. I've kind of got an autumn list. I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants kind of thing with making up what I want to make up. I hope you're all well. Have a fantastic week. Take care and I'll catch you all soon. Bye. <laughs>